everyone welcome back to the channel i hope you're all doing well out there and today we're gonna head back to 80s slasher territory but before we do that do me a favor like comment and subscribe join me here i greatly would appreciate that also shameless plug as always for my t public page i will leave a link in the description box below and today we're heading back to 1981 the early days of the slasher boom for graduation day yes graduation day came out may 1st of 1981 just before graduation day for a lot of schools it's rated r it's an hour and 36 minutes long um this film actually had a, a low budget of two hundred fifty thousand dollars, and upon release it was actually a huge hit it made 24 million now the director of this film was herb freed he also co-wrote the script and he knew the producer of this film went to a uh, bunch of uh, theater chains. Back then, it wasn't like it is now where big corporations owned the theater chains. Back then, it was smaller groups of people that owned like a bunch of theaters here, a bunch of theaters there. It was a much more separated. Um, and he raised the $250,000 off of going into different theater groups and raising the money that way. Now, in this film, Christopher George is in this film. He plays Coach George Michael. I'm not joking. It's Coach, Coach George Michaels. And uh, he was coming off of Enter the Ninja in the same year, 81. Obviously, he was in Grizzly. He was in City of the Living Dead. A lot of credits to his career. You can check it out on the IMDb. And he's good here as the coach. Um, Pat McKenzie plays Anne. She is the sister of the girl that dies and causes all of the turmoil and the killing that goes on at this school. Michael Pataki plays the principal, and he was Dr. Hoffman. That gave Sam Loomis a bunch of shit in Halloween 4. And he was also in um, Rocky 4. He played Drago. Was the guy that did the talking for him at the press conferences. He was that gentleman in that movie. And then the Quigley's in this film is Doris. She actually wasn't originally cast. Another actress was cast. They had it. They let her go and brought her in. And Vanna White is in this film as well as Doris. That's right. Vanna White is in this film as well. So if you look for her, you'll see her. She's in a few scenes here. And right to being the film, we start off at a track meet. And Anne's sister's running, and she's running and running, and she wins, and she drops dead from a blood clot. And fast forward a year, Anne had gone off. She was in the military. She came home for graduation. They're going to pay, pay tribute to her sister. And pretty soon, somebody starts killing folks that were on the track team and around that situation. And it's a murder mystery, like a lot of these films. And Eventually, at the end of the film, it's revealed it's Kevin, her sister's boyfriend. He tries to kill Anne. She dispatches of him. And that's the end of Graduation Day. So what to like about this film? Christopher George, I always like Christopher George. He's good here. Um, you know, he's one of the more seasoned actors here, along with Michael Pataki. I mean, everybody else is younger actresses or actors. Um, so they're definitely the standouts here in terms of acting. The acting is okay. It's not the greatest across the board, but it's serviceable considering the time and the budget that we have here that we're working with here. Um, the, re the killer itself, I, you know, I've seen this film before, but even looking back and when I first saw it, you kind of realize who it is. You know, they try to set up a red herring. They try to set up the coach for a red herring. Spoiler alert, this movie's been out since 81. But I never thought it was too obvious it was the coach. There's no way. And it ends up being her boyfriend at the end because Anne goes to visit her boyfriend to give him something. And she finds that the boyfriend's keeping her sister's body up in the bedroom because they were supposed to get married after graduation. And he's he can't deal with her death. And he's just gone totally off the reservation, taking revenge on everybody he deems involved in the cause of her death. Although nobody it was a medical problem. Nobody caused it really. It's just he can't deal with the situation, and he's gone on a killing rampage. Um, so the reveal's okay. I mean, it's not mind-blowing. It's not, you know, anything. It's it's okay. It, it works. It services the story. This is a middle-of-the-road. It's an okay. I mean, it has, you know, it has a cult following, but this is a middle-of-the-road slasher film. It's not the greatest. It's not the worst. The directing's okay. It looks like they used, I mean, on this Blu-ray, it's a 4K remaster, and it looks like, I mean, I've seen this before. I saw it a couple summers ago up at the Mahoning Drive and at Camp Blood. They played it for the third feature. And it almost looks like during the filming of this movie, they use different film stocks. Like, I guess whatever they can get their hands on. I don't know if that's the case. But that's what it looks like. Because it looks like there's varying degrees of quality of film stock used 
to make this film. It was a low budget film. The kills are okay. The effects aren't the greatest. There's a pretty cool beheading in the film. I like the music. There's a band who lent music to the to film. I like the music in this film. Um, there's one scene though that goes on way too long. At the end of the day, this is not the greatest slasher. It's okay. It's not Halloween. It's not Friday the Thirteenth. It's it's okay. It's it it came right along right in that line of the, the boom of slasher movies. I mean, they were making them one after another after another after another. And this one's okay. It's not the worst one. It's not the best one, but it's okay. Um, the Herb, the director Herb Freed, actually, there's a scene when Lenita Quigley's character is getting chased. He played the killer during that scene, and the killer's getup is not anything special. It's like sweat, like a gym suit, sweatpants, a sweatshirt, and a fencing mask, which would come back in Urban Legends Final Cut. They used the fencing mask in that film. Um, other than that, that's all I got for this film. This is an okay slasher film. It's perfectly fine. It's entertaining. It's very low budget. Some of the acting is not the greatest. But at the end of the day, I would give Graduation Day a 6 out of 10. 6 out of 10 for Graduation Day. Have you ever seen this one? Leave a comment down below. Let me know. Hit the thumbs up. Hit the subscribe button. Share this video. I greatly would appreciate that. I'll be back soon with another review. But until next time, bye.